Hey, this is Mr. Mitchell with a video on ions and diatomic molecules. You might remember that an ion is an element or an atom of an element that has too many or not enough electrons. So let's take a look at a sample element. Here we have potassium, K, which is number 19 on the periodic table. Potassium has 19 electrons normally. But scientists think that these electrons are not all on the outside where they can interact with other elements. Scientists think that there are inner shells that fill up before you get to the ones on the outer shells. And you may remember that the innermost shell has two as a maximum. Then you start having shells that have like eight as a maximum. So with potassium having 19 electrons, it has all its inner shell full except one. One is the valence number. You may remember if you look at the column and go straight up, this is in column one. So that's why it has a valence of one. That one electron is the one that may end up combining with another element. And that one electron, if it leaves, is going to make this an ion with only 18 electrons if this electron joins another or flies away. So that would be an example of an ion. And if it flies away, then you would have a positive one charge to this ion. Anything that is in this column will have a positive one charge if their one valence electron leaves. So you can even create the whole periodic table with what the charges would be if their outer shell electrons were to leave. So potassium would have a charge of plus one because it would have more protons in the nucleus and it has electrons out in the shells. And that would be what's called a cation. A cation is a positively charged ion. Take a look at what we have here. We have here four protons in a nucleus and three electrons. One of the electrons has gone. So that means the overall charge is plus one. That is a cation. A cation has T in it, which looks like a plus sign if you write its lower case. That's how I remember you have cation is plus charge. Now, anion is one that has more electrons. Say this one has taken one of the electrons from this cation. So it has three protons in the nucleus and one, two, three, four, in this case, five electrons from another place. Whether it was five or whether it was four, it still has a negative charge. And you can remember this one as a negative ion. That's how you remember that an anion is going to be negatively charged. So as you look on the periodic table, all the anions are going to be over here in the nonmetals just because they need those extra electrons. All the cations are going to be over on the metal side just because they have those extra ones to give. Now, you can have an anion that is not just one element, and they are called a polyatomic ion. If you take a look at some positive polyatomic ions, well, if you take a look at some positive polyatomic ions over here, you have like NH4 is plus one, so the N and the H's have gotten together, but they're still not balanced. And they have a charge of plus one. Same thing with OH. OH has a charge of negative one, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you can have groupings that are still having a charge, and those are called polyatomic ions. So an ion has more or less electrons that it needs. You have some positive ions here. Sodium becomes an ion that's going to be a cation because it loses that one electron. 
we have beryllium that loses two, and I have this over here to show you how it is commonly written. If you have one like aluminum that loses three electrons, then it is positively charged by three AMU, or not really three AMU, but this represents that there are three charges that are gone. Same thing with negative, you would write it like this. So, even though on the periodic table it looks like everything is balanced, in reality you have electrons that are switching from one element to another all the time. So, that's a little bit about ions. What about diatomic molecules? There are several non-metals, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or some that actually make bonds with themselves. Hydrogen here had two electrons in this bond. One electron came from one hydrogen. One electron came from another hydrogen. So they actually were able to make bonds by themselves. Same thing with the oxygen. And you can do that with the nitrogen and the other things. And it would be called O2 if you had written that down. I'm going to write this down for oxygen. Oxygen would be called O2 as a diatomic molecule. Hydrogen would be H2. Now, this is where it gets interesting, to me anyway. These diatomic molecules do not exist on their own. You do not ever have one atom of oxygen. It is always paired with another oxygen. Now, of course, it still interacts with others. You can have H2O, which means you have two hydrogens and theoretically one oxygen. But in reality, you have to have those two oxygens together. So what you would have is two molecules of H2O together because one molecule of oxygen or one atom of oxygen just does not exist on its own. And you would actually have two H2Os. All of these diatomic molecules exist only in pairs. So uh, we're going to end up doing a lot of writing of molecules and atoms like you see here, where you have two atoms of something and one atom of another, and you form two of them. And I put this over here to call them simple compounds, because that's what you have. You have compounds where you have more than one element that are put together, uh, something like CH4. That is more than one element put together. C2H2, more than one element put together. And even though I do not have a periodic table here, every one of these compounds does not have a charge. All the positives and negatives will balance out and all the electrons will add up to eight. Yes, we will continue to work more on this in class. Hope you learned a little bit about ions and diatomic molecules.